Blessed is our God always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, O God, glory to you, heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, present in all places and filling all things, treasury of good things and giver of life. Come, take your abode in us, <coughs> cleanse us of every stain and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. <coughs> holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, forgive our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Come, let us worship and bow down before God our King. Come, let us worship and bow down before Christ God our King. Come, let us worship and bow down before Him, Christ our King and God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy, and according to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my lawlessness and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my lawlessness and my sin is always before me. Against you only have I sinned and done evil in your sight, that you may be justified in your words and overcome when you are judged. For behold, I was conceived in transgressions, and in sins my mother bore me. Behold, you love truth, you showed me the unknown and secret things of your wisdom. You shall sprinkle me with hyssop, and I will be cleansed. You shall wash me, and I will be made whiter than snow. You shall make me hear joy and gladness. My bones that were humbled shall greatly rejoice. Turn your face from my sins, and blot out all my transgressions. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your guiding spirit. I will teach transgressors your ways, and the ungodly shall turn back to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall greatly rejoice in your righteousness. O Lord, you shall open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For if you desired sacrifice, I would give it. You will not be pleased with whole burnt offerings. A sacrifice to God is a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, in your good pleasure to Zion, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then you will be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer young bulls on your altar. O God, give heed to help me. O Lord, make haste to help me. May those who seek my soul be dishonored and shamed. May those who plot evils against me be turned back and disgraced. May those be turned back immediately who shame me, saying, Well done, well done. May all who seek you greatly rejoice and be glad in you. And let those who love your salvation always say, Let God be magnified. But I am poor and needy, O God, help me. You are my helper and deliverer, O Lord, do not delay. O Lord, hear my prayer, give ear to, your, to, give ear to my supplication in your truth. Answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living shall become righteous in your sight. For the enemy persecuted my soul, he humbled my life to the ground. He caused me to dwell in dark places as one long dead, and my spirit was in anguish within me, my heart was troubled within me. I remembered the days of old, and I meditated on all your works. I meditated on the works of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a waterless land. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faints within me. Turn not your face from me, lest I become like those who go down into the pit. Cause me to hear your mercy in the morning, for I hope in you. Make me know, O Lord, the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord, for to you I flee for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your good spirit shall guide me in the land of uprightness. For your name's sake, O Lord, give me life. In your righteousness you shall bring my soul out of affliction. In your mercy you shall destroy my enemies. You shall utterly destroy all who afflict my soul, for I am your servant. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will to men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, and we thank you for your great glory. Lord, King, Heavenly God, Father Almighty, Only Begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. Lord God, the Lamb of God, the Son of the Father, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, you who take away the sins of the world. Accept our supplication, you who sit at the right hand of the Father, and have mercy on us. For you are the only Holy One, you are the only Lord, Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Every evening I shall bless you, and I shall praise your name forever and unto the ages of ages. Lord, you have become for us a refuge from generation to generation. I have said, Lord, have mercy on me, heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Lord, to you I have fled, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. For with you is the fountain of life, in your light we shall see light. Extend your mercy to those who know you. Grant, O Lord, that in, that in this night we may be kept without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, and praised and glorified is your name unto the ages. Amen. Let your mercy, O Lord, come upon us, just as we have hoped in you. Blessed are you, O Lord, and teach me your commandments. Blessed are you, O Master, make me understand your commandments. Blessed are you, O Holy One, enlighten me with your commandments. Lord, your mercy remains forever. Do not turn away from the works of your hands. To you belongs praise, to you belongs a hymn, to you belongs glory. To the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages. Light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things remain who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. And he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. It is truly right to bless you, Theotokos, ever blessed, most pure, and mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim and beyond compare more glorious than the seraphim. Without corruption you gave birth to God the Logos. We magnify you, the true Theotokos. He became for me a helper and a shelter for salvation. He is my God and I will glorify Him. The God of my Father and Him will I exalt, for He is greatly glorified. He became for me a helper and shelter for salvation. He is my God and I will glorify Him. The God of my Father, in Him will I exalt, for He is greatly glorified. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Where shall I begin to weep for the actions of my wretched life? What first fruit shall I offer, O Christ, in this my lamentation? But in your compassion, grant me forgiveness of sins. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Come, wretched soul, with your flesh to the Creator of all. Make confession to Him and abstain henceforth from your past brutishness and to offer to God tears of repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have rivaled in transgression, Adam the first born man, and I have and I have found myself stripped naked of God of the eternal kingdom and its joy because of my sins. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Woe to you, miserable soul, how like you are to the first Eve. For you looked in wickedness and were grievously wounded. You have touched the tree and rashly tasted the deceptive food. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Instead of the visible leaf, I have the eve of the mind, the passionate thought in my flesh, showing me what seems sweet. 
Yet whenever I taste from it, I find it bitter. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Adam was justly banished from Eden because he disobeyed one commandment of yours, O Savior. What then shall I suffer? For I am always rejecting your words of life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. By my own free choice have I incurred the guilt of Cain's murder. I have killed my conscience, bringing the flesh to life and making war upon the soul by my wicked actions. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O Jesus, I have not been like Abel in his righteousness. Never have I offered you acceptable gifts or godly actions, a pure sacrifice or an unblemished life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like Cain, O miserable soul, we too have offered to the Creator of all defiled actions and a polluted sacrifice and a worthless life. And so we also are condemned. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. As the potter molds the clay, you fashion me, giving me flesh and bones, breath and life. But accept me in repentance, O my Maker and Deliverer and Judge. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I confess to you, O Savior, the sins I have committed. Committed, the wounds of my soul and body, which murderous thoughts like thieves have inflicted inwardly upon me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. So I have sinned, O Savior, yet I know that you are full of love and kindness. You chastise with mercy and are fervent in compassion. You see me weeping, and you run to meet me, like the father calling back the prodigal son. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I lie as an outcast before your gate, O Savior. In my old age, cast me not down empty into hell. But before the end comes, in your love grant me remission of sins. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I am the man who fell among thieves, even my own thoughts. They have covered all my body with wounds, and I lie beaten and bruised. But come to me, O Christ, my Savior, and heal me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The priest saw me first, but passed by on the other side. The Levite looked on me in my distress, but despised my nakedness. O Jesus, sprung from Mary, come to me and take pity on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of all, take from me the heavy yoke of sin, and in your compassion give me tears of compunction. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. It is time for repentance, to you I call my Creator. Take from me the heavy yoke of sin, and in your compassion give me tears of compunction. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Reject me not, O Savior, cast me not away from your presence. Take from me the heavy yoke of sin, and in your compassion grant me remission of sins. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. All my offenses, voluntary and involuntary, manifest and hidden, known and unknown, forgive, O Savior, for you are God. Be merciful and save me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. From my youth, O Savior, I have rejected your commandments. Ruled by the passions, I have passed my whole life in heedlessness. 
and slaughter. For I cry to you, O Savior, even now at the end, save me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, as the prodigal, O Savior. I have wasted the substance of my soul in riotous living, and I am barren of the virtues of holiness. In my hunger I cry, O giver of mercy, come quickly out to me, to meet me and take pity on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I fall down, Jesus, at your feet. I have sinned against you. Be merciful to me. Take from me the heavy yoke of sin, and in your compassion, O God, accept me in repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Enter not into judgment with me, bringing before me the things I should have done, examining my words and correcting my impulses. But in your mercy overlook my sins and save me, O Lord Almighty. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us. Grant me the light of grace from God's providence on high, so that I may flee from the darkness of the passions and sing fervently the joyful tale of your life, O Mary. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us, bowing before the divine laws of Christ. You do near to Him, forsaking the unbridled longings of sensual pleasure. And in the fear of God, you gained all the virtues as if they were one. Holy Father Andrew, pray to God for us. Through your intercessions, O Andrew, deliver us from shameful passions. We pray you make us now partakers of Christ's kingdom. For with faith and love we sing your praises. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Trinity beyond all being, worshipped in unity. Take from me the heavy yoke of sin, and in your compassion grant me tears of compunction. Hold now and ever, and unto the ages of ages, amen. O Thou, talk us the hope and protection of those who sing your praises. Take from me the heavy yoke of sin. O pure lady, accept me in repentance. Attend, O heaven, and I shall speak and sing in praise of Christ, who took flesh from a virgin and came to dwell among us. Attend, O heaven, and I shall speak and sing in praise of Christ who took flesh from a virgin and came to dwell among us. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Attend, O heaven, and I shall speak. Give ear, O earth, to the voice of one who repents before God and sings his praise. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Look upon me, God my Savior, with your merciful eye and accept my fervent confession. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. More than all men I have sinned, I alone have sinned against you. But as God take pity on your creation, O Savior. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I am surrounded by the storm of sin, O compassionate Lord. But stretch out your hand to me, as, you, as once you did to Peter. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I offer to you, O merciful Lord, the tears of the harlot. Take pity on me, O Savior, in your compassion. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. With the lust of passions, I have darkened the beauty of my soul and turned my whole mind entirely into earth. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have torn the first garment that the Creator wove for me in the beginning, and now I lie naked. 
Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have clothed myself in the torn coat that the servant, serpent will offer me by his counsel, and I am ashamed. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I looked upon the beauty of the tree, and my mind was deceived. And now I lie naked and ashamed. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. All the ruling passions have plowed upon my back, making long furrows of wickedness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have lost the beauty and glory with which I was first created. And now I lie naked and ashamed. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Sin has stripped me of the robe that God once wore for me, and it has sold for me garments of skin. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I am clothed with the raiment of shame as with fig leaves. In condemnation of my self of passions. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I am clad in a garment that is defiled and shamefully bloodstained by a life of passion and self-indulgence. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have stained the garments of my flesh, O Savior and defiled that which was made in your image and likeness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have fallen beneath the painful burden of the passions, and the corruption of material things, and I am hard-pressed by the enemy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Instead of freedom from possession, so Savior, I pursued a life in love with material things, and now I wear a heavy yoke. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I adorn the idol of my flesh with a many-colored coat of shameful thoughts, and I am condemned. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I cared only for the outward adornment and neglected that which is within the tabernacle fashioned by God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. With my lustful desires, I formed within myself the deformity of the passions and disfigured the beauty of my mind. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I discolored with the passions the first beauty of the image, O Savior. But seek me as once you sought the lost coin and find me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like the harlot I cry to you, I have sinned. I alone have sinned against you, except my tears also as sweet ointment, O Savior. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like David, I fell into lust, and I am covered with filth. But wash me clean, O Savior, by my tears. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like the publican, I cry to you, be merciful, O Savior, be merciful to me. For no child of Adam has ever sinned against you, as I have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have no tears, no repentance, no compunction. But as God, O Savior, restore them on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Lord, Lord, at the last day shine not your door against me, but open it to me, for I repent before you. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, O lover of mankind who desires that all men shall be saved. In your goodness call me back and accept me in repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, give ear to the groaning of my soul, and accept the tears that fall from my eyes. 
O Lord, save me. Glory to you, our God, glory, glory to, to you. you. I sing your praises, one in three persons, God of all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Most holy Theotokos, save us. O Theotokos, undefiled virgin, O Lord, worthy of all praise, intercede fervently for our salvation. See now, see that I am God, who reigned man and who reigned thy own manna in the days of old, and made springs of water flow from the rock for my people in the wilderness. By my right hand and by my power alone. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. See now, see that I am God. Give ear to my soul, to the Lord, as he cries to you. Forsake your former sin, forsake your former sin, and fear him as your judge and God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. To whom shall I liken you, O soul of many sins? Alas, to Canaan, to Lamech, for you stoned your body to death with your evil deeds, and killed your mind with your disordered longings. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Call to mind my soul, all who live before the law. You have you have not been like Seth or followed Enos or Enoch, who was translated to heaven or Noah. But you are destitute without a share in the life of the righteous. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy <coughs> on me. You alone, O my soul, opened the windows of the wrath of your God, and you flooded as the earth all your flesh and deeds and life. And you remained outside the ark of salvation. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have slain a man to my grief and wounding, said Lamech, and a young man to my hurt. And he cried aloud, lamenting, Do you not trample then my soul? For you have defiled your flesh and, and polluted your mind. Have mercy on me. O oh God, have mercy on me. Ah, oh, how I have emulated Lamech, the murderer of old, slaying my soul as if it were a man, and my mind as if it were a young man. With sensual longings I have killed my body, as came the murderer killed his brother. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. Skillfully you plan to build a tower, O oh my soul, and to establish a stronghold for your lust. But the Creator confounded your designs and dashed your devices to the ground. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on, on me. I am wounded and smitten, see the enemy's arrows which have pierced my soul and body. See the wounds, the open sores, and the injuries that cry, that cry out to God against the blows inflicted by my freely chosen passion. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Roused to anger by their transgressions, the Lord once rained down fire from heaven and burnt up the man of Sodom. And you, my soul, have kindled the fire of Gehenna, and there to your bitter sorrow you shall burn. Holy Mother Mary, pray, pray to, to God, God for us. us. Know and see that I am God, searching out men's hearts and punishing their thoughts, reproving their actions and burning up their sins. And in my judgment, I protect the orphan, the humble, and the poor. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us. Sunk in the abyss of wickedness, O Mary, you lifted up your hands to the merciful God. And as to Peter, in his loving kindness, he stretched out his hand to you in help, seeking in every way your conversion. Holy Mother Mary, 
Mary, pray to God for us. With all eagerness and love you ran to Christ, turning from your former path of sin, finding your food in the trackless wilderness, and fulfilling in purity the commandments of God. Holy Father Andrew, pray to God for us. Let us see, O oh my soul, let us see the love of God in master for mankind. And before the end comes, with tears, let us fall down before him, crying at the prayers of Andrew, O oh Savior, have mercy upon us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, O Trinity, uncreated and without being, O undivided unity, accept me in repentance and save me a sinner. I am your creation, reject me not, but spare me and deliver me from the fire of condemnation. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages, amen. Most your Lady, Mother of God, hope of those who run to you in the haven of the storm tossed. Pray to the merciful God, your Creator and your Son, that he may grant his mercy even unto me. Upon the unshaken rock of your commandments, O Christ, make firm your church. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, the Lord once rained down fire from heaven and consumed the land of Sodom. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, flee like lot to the mountain and take refuge in Zoar before it is too late. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Flee from the flames, O my soul, flee from the burning heat of Sodom, flee from destruction by the fire of God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I confess to you, O Savior, I have sinned, I have sinned against you. But in your compassion, absolve and forgive me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I alone have sinned against you. I have sinned more than all men. Reject me not, O Christ, my Savior. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. You are the good shepherd. Seek me, the lamb that has strayed, and do not forget me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. You are my beloved Jesus, you are my creator, in you shall I be justified, O Savior. Glory to you, our God, glory to you, O God, Trinity in unity, save us from error and temptation and distress. Most holy Theotokos, save us, rejoice whom that help God, rejoice throne of the Lord, rejoice my Mother of our lives. Establish upon the rock of your commandments my heart, O Master, sorely shaken as it is, O Lord. Only you are holy, and again, only you are Lord. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. For me you are the fountain of life and the destroyer of death. And from my heart I cry to you before the end. I have sinned, be merciful to me and save me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my Savior, I follow the example of those who lived in wantonness in the days of Noah. And like them I am condemned to drown in the flood. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned against you. Be merciful to me, for there is no sinner whom I have not surpassed in my offenses. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, you followed him who mocked his father. You did not cover your neighbor's shame, walking backwards with averted face. 
days. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O wretched soul, you have not inherited the blessing of Shem, nor have you received like Japheth a spacious domain in the land of forgiveness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, depart from sin, from the land of Haran, and come to the land that Abraham and inherited, which flows with incorruption and eternal life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. You have heard, my soul, how Abraham in days of old left the land of his fathers and became a wanderer. Follow him, follow him in his joy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. At the oak of Mamre, the patriarch gave hospitality to the angels, and in his old age he inherited the reward of the promise. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. You know my miserable soul, how Isaac was offered mystically as a new and one wanted sacrifice to the Lord. Follow him in his choice. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, be watchful. You have heard how Ishmael was driven out as the child of a bondwoman. Take heed lest the same thing happen to you because of your lies. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, you have become like Hagar the Egyptian. Your free choice has been enslaved, and you born as your child, a new Ishmael, stubborn willfulness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. You know, my soul, the ladder that was shown to Jacob, reaching from earth to heaven. Why have you not provided a firm foundation for it through your godly actions? Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Follow the example of Melchizedek, the priest of God. The king set apart, who was an image of the life of Christ among men in the world. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Turn back, wretched soul, and lament before the marketplace of life comes to an end. Before the Lord shuts the door of the bridal chamber. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Do not look back, my soul, and so be turned into a pillar of salt. Bear the example of the people of Sodom, and take refuge in Zoar. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Flee, my soul, like Lot from the burning of sin. Flee from Sodom and Gomorrah. Flee from the flame of every brutish desire. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Have mercy, O Lord, have mercy on me, I cry to you. When you come with your angels to give to every man to return for his deed. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Reject not, O Master, the prayer of those who sing your praises. But in your loving kindness be merciful and grant forgiveness to them that ask with faith. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us. I am held fast, O Mother, by the tempest and billows of sins. Keep me safe and lead me to the haven of divine repentance. Holy Mother Mary, pray, pray to, to God, God for us. us. O Holy Mary, offer your prayer of supplication to the compassion of the Theotokos, and through your intercessions, open to me the door that leads to God. Holy Father Andrew, pray to God for us, through your prayers grant even to me forgiveness of trespasses. O Andrew, Bishop of Prefest of Guides, leading us to the mysteries of repentance. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O simple unity, praise in trinity of persons, uncreated nature without beginning. 
Save us who in faith worship your power. Both now and ever, and to the ages of ages, all men. O Mother of God, without knowing man, you gave birth within time to the Son, who was begotten outside time from the Father. And strange wonder you nurse him while still remaining virgin. It is good to hide the secret of a king, but it is glorious to reveal and preach the works of God. Tobit 12:7. So, the, so, said the, so said the archangel Raphael to Tobit when he performed the wonderful healing of his blindness. Actually, not to keep the secret of a king is perilous and a terrible risk, but to be silent about the works of God is a great loss for the soul. And I, says St. Sophronios, in writing the life of St. Mary of Egypt, am afraid to hide the works of God by silence. Remembering the misfortune threatened to the servant who hid his God-given talent in the earth, I am bound to pass on the holy account that has reached me. And let no one think, continues St. Sophronios, that I have had the audacity to write untruth or doubt this great marvel. May I never lie about holy things. If there do happen to be people who, after reading this record, do not believe it, may the Lord have mercy on them, because, reflecting on the weakness of human nature, they considered impossible these wonderful things accomplished by holy people. But now we must begin to tell this most amazing story which has taken place in our generation. There was a certain elder in one of the monasteries of Palestine, a priest of holy life and speech, who from childhood had been brought up in monastic ways and customs. The elder's name was Zosimas. He had been through the whole course of the ascetic life, and in everything he adhered to the rule once given to him by his tutors as regards spiritual labors. He had also had added a good deal himself whilst laboring to subject his flesh to the will of the Spirit, and he had not failed in his aim. He was so renowned for his spiritual life that many came to him from neighboring monasteries and some even from afar. While doing this, he never ceased to study the divine scriptures whether resting, standing, working, or eating food, if the scraps he nibbled could be called food. He incessantly and constantly had a single aim, always to sing of God and to practice the teachings of the divine scriptures. Zosimas used to relate how, as soon as he was taken from his mother's breast, he was handed over to the monastery, where he went through his training as an ascetic till he reached the age of 53. After that, he began to be tormented with the thought that he was perfect in everything and needed no instruction from anyone, saying to himself mentally, Is there a monk on earth who can be of use to me and show me a kind of asceticism that I have not accomplished? Is there a man to be found in the desert who has surpassed me? Thus thought the elder, when suddenly an angel appeared to him and said, Zosimas, valiantly as thou struggled, as far as this is within the power of man, valiantly hast thou gone through the ascetic course. But there is no man who has attained perfection. Before thee lies unknown struggles greater than those thou hast already accomplished. That thou mayest know how many other ways lead to salvation. Leave thy native land like the renowned patriarch Abraham and go to the monastery by the river Jordan. Zosimas did as he was told. He left the monastery in which he had lived from childhood and went to the river of Jordan. As at last he reached the community to which God had sent him. Having knocked at the door of the monastery, he told the monk who was the porter who he was, and the porter told the abbot. On being admitted to the abbot's presence, Zosimus made the usual monastic prostration in prayer. Seeing, seeing that he was a monk, the abbot asked, Where dost thou come from, brother, and why hast thou come to us, poor old men? Zosimus replied, There is no need to speak about where I have come from, but I have come, Father, seeking spiritual profit, for I have heard great things about thy skill in leading souls to God. Brother, the abbot said to him, only God can heal the infirmity of the soul. May he teach thee and us his divine ways and guide us. But, that, but as it is the love of Christ that has moved thee to visit us poor old men, then stay with us, if that is why thou hast come. May the good shepherd who laid down his life for our salvation fill us all with the grace of the Holy Spirit. After this, Zosimus bowed to the abbot, asked for his prayers and blessings, and stayed in the monastery. There he saw el elders proficient both in action and the contemplation of God, a flame in spirit working for the Lord. They sang incessantly, they stood in prayer all night. 
work was ever in their hands, and psalms on their lips. Never an idle word was heard among them. They knew nothing about acquiring temp temporal goods or the cares of life. But they had one desire, to become in body like, like corpses. Their constant food was the word of God, and they sustained their bodies on bread and water as much as their love for God allowed them. Seeing this, Zosimus was greatly edified and prepared for the struggle that lay before him. Many days passed, and the time drew near when all Christians fast and prepare themselves to worship the divine passion and resurrection of Christ. The monastery gates were kept always locked and only opened when one of the community was sent out on some errand. It was a desert place, not only unvisited by people of the world, but even unknown to them. There was a rule in that monastery, which was the reason why God brought Zosimus there. At the beginning of the great fast, on Forgiveness Sunday, the priests celebrated the Holy Liturgy and all partook of the Holy Body and Blood of Christ. After the liturgy, they went to the refractory and would eat a little Lenten food. Then all gathered in church, and after praying earnestly with prostrations, the elders kissed one another and asked forgiveness. And each made a prostration to the abbot and asked his blessing and prayers for the struggle that lay before them. After this, the gates of the monastery were thrown open, and singing, The Lord is my light and my Savior, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defender of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 26, 1. And the rest of that psalm, all went out into the desert and crossed the river Jordan. Only one or two brothers were left in the monastery, not to guard the property, for there was nothing to rob, but so as not to leave the church without divine service. Each took with him as much as he could or wanted in the way of food, according to the needs of his body. One would take a little bread, another some figs, another dates or wheat soaked in water. And some took nothing but their own body covered with rags and fed when nature forced them to it on the plants that grew in the desert. After crossing the Jordan, they all scattered far and wide in many in different directions. And this was the rule of life they had, and which they all observed, neither to talk to one another, nor to know how each one lived and fasted. If they did happen to catch sight of another, one another, they went to another part of the country, living alone and always singing to God, and at a definite time eating a very small quantity of food. In this way, they spent the whole of the fast and used to return the monastery a week before the resurrection of Christ on Palm Sunday. Each one returned, having his own conscience as the witness of his labor, and no one asked how, it, no one asked another how he had spent his time in the desert. Such were rules of the monastery. Every one of them, whilst in the desert, struggled with himself before the judge of the struggle, God, not seeking to please men and fast before the eyes of all. For what is done for the sake of man to win praise and honor? is not only useless to the one who does it, but sometimes the cause of great punishment. Zosimus did the same as all, and he went far, far into the desert with a secret hope of finding some father who might be living there and who might be able to satisfy his thirst and longing. And he wandered on tireless, he wandered on tireless, as if hurrying on to some definite place. He had walked he had already walked for twenty days, and when the sixth hour, sixth hour came, he stopped, and turning to the east, he began to sing the sixth hour and recite the customary prayers. He used to break his journey thus at fixed hours of the day to rest a little, to chant psalms standing, and to pray on bent knees. And as he sung thus without turning his eyes from the heavens, he suddenly saw to the right of the hillock on which he stood the semblance of a human body. At first he was confused, thinking he beheld a vision of the devil, and even started to fear. But having guarded himself with the sign of the cross, and banished all fear, he turned his gaze in that direction, and in truth some saw, form, saw some form gliding southwards. It was naked, the skin dark as if burned up by the heat of the sun, the hair on its head was white as fleece, and not long, falling just below its neck. Zosimus was so overjoyed at beholding a human form that he ran after it in pursuit, but the form fled from him. He followed. At length, when he was near enough to be heard, he shouted, Why dost thou run from an old man and a sinner? Slave of the true God, wait for me, whoever thou art. In God's name I tell thee, for the love of God, for whose sake thou art living in the desert. Forgive me for God's sake, but I cannot turn towards thee and show thee my face, Abba Zosimus. 
for I am a woman and naked, as thou dost see with the uncovered shame of my body. But if thou wouldst like to fulfill one wish of a sinful woman, throw me thy cloak so that I can cover my body and can turn to thee and ask for thy blessing. Her terror seized Zosimus, for he heard that she called him by name, but he realized that she could not have done so without knowing anything, anything of him if she had not had the power of spiritual insight. He at once did as he was asked. He took off his old, tattered cloak and threw it to her, turning away as he did so. She picked it up and was able to cover at least a part of her body. Then she turned to Zosimus and said, Why didst thou wish, Abba Zosimus, to see a sinful woman? Why dost thou wish to hear or learn from me, thou who hast not shrunk from, great, from such great shrug, struggles? Zosimus threw himself on the ground and asked for her blessing. She likewise bowed down before him, and thus they lay on the ground prostrate, asking for each other's blessing. And one word alone could be heard from both, Bless me. After a long while, the woman said to Zosimus, Abba Zosimus, it is thee who must give blessing and pray. Thou art dignified by the order of priesthood, and for many years thou hast been standing before the holy altar and offering the sacrifice of the divine mysteries. This flung Zosimus into even greater terror. At length, with tears, he said to her, O mother, filled with the Spirit, by thy mode of life it is evident that thou livest with God and have died to the world. The grace granted to thee is apparent, for thou hast called me by name and recognized that I am a priest, though thou hast never seen me before. Grace is recognized not by one's orders, but by gifts of the Spirit. So give me thy blessing, for God's sake, for I need thy prayers. Then giving way before the wish of the elder, the woman said, Blessed is God who cares for the salvation of men and their souls. Zosimus answered, Amen, and both rose to their feet. Then the woman asked the elder, why hast thou come, man of God, to me who am so sinful? Why dost thou wish to see a woman naked and devoid of every virtue? Though I know one thing, the grace of the Holy Spirit has brought thee to render me a service in time. Tell me, Father, how are the Christian peoples living, and the kings, how is the church guided? Zosima said, By thy prayers, Mother, Christ has granted lasting peace to all but fulfill the unworthy petition of an old man and pray for the whole world and for me who am a sinner so that my wanderings in the desert may not be fruitless. She answered, Thou who art a priest, Abba Zosimas, is it is thee who must pray for me and for all, for this is thy calling. But as we must all be obedient, I will gladly do what thou dost ask. And with these words, she turned to the east and raising her eyes to heaven and stretching out her hands, she began to pray in a whisper. One could not hear separate words so that Zosimas could not understand anything that she said in her prayers. Meanwhile, he stood, according to his own world, all in a flutter, looking at the ground without saying a word. And he swore, calling, to God, calling God to witness, that when at length he thought that her prayer was very long, he took his eyes off the ground and saw that she was raised about a forearm's distance from the ground and stood praying in the air. When he saw this, even greater terror seized him, and he fell on the ground, weeping and repeating many times, Lord, have mercy. And whilst lying prostrate on the ground, he was tempted by a thought. Is it not a spirit? And perhaps her prayer is hypocrisy. But at the very same moment, the woman turned round, raised the elder from the ground, and said, Why do thoughts confuse thee, Abba, and tempt thee about me, as if I were a spirit and a, and a dissembler in prayer? Know, Holy Father, that I am only a sinful woman, though I am guarded by holy baptism. I am no spirit but earth and ashes and flesh alone. And with these words she guarded herself with the sign of the cross on her forehead, eyes, mouth, and breast, saying, May God defend us from the evil one and from his designs, for fierce is his struggles against us. Hearing and seeing this, the elder fell to the ground, and embracing her feet, he said with tears, I beg thee by the name of Christ our God, who was born of a virgin, for whose sake thou hast stripped thyself, for whose sake thou hast exhausted thy flesh, do not hide from thy slave, who, are, who thou art and whence and how thou hast come into this desert. Tell me everything so that the marvelous works of God may become known. 
a hidden wisdom and a secret treasure. What profit is there in them? Tell me all, I implore thee, for not out of vanity or for self-display wilt thou speak, but to reveal the truth to me, an unworthy sinner. I believe in God, for whom thou dost live and whom thou dost serve. I believe that he led me into this desert so as to show me his ways in regard to thee. It is not in our power to resist the plans of God. If it were not the will of God that thee and thy life would be known, he would not have allowed me to see thee and would not have strengthened me to undertake this journey, one like me who never dared to leave his cell. Much more, said Abba Zosimus. But the woman raised him and said, I am ashamed, Abba, to speak, of, to speak to thee of my disgraceful life. Forgive me for God's sake. But as thou hast already seen my naked body, I shall likewise lay bare before thee my work, so that thou mayest know with what shame and obscenity my soul is filled. I was not running away out of vanity, as thou thought, for what have I to be proud of, I whom was the chosen vessel of the devil? But when I start my story, thou wilt run from me as from a snake, for thy ears will not be able to hear, to bear the vileness of my actions. But I shall tell thee all without hiding anything, only to implore thee first of all to pray insistently for me, for, so that I may find mercy on the day of judgment. The elder wept, and the woman began her story. My native land, Holy Father, was Egypt. Already during the lifetime of my parents, when I was 12 years old, I renounced their love and went to Alexandria. I am ashamed to recall how there I at first ruined my maidenhood and then unrestrainedly and insatiably gave myself up to sens sensuality. It is more becoming to speak of this briefly so that thou, may just, that thou may just know my passion and my lechery. For about 17 years, forgive me, I lived like that. I was like a fire of public debauch and it was not for the sake of gain, here I speak the truth. Often when they wished to pray me, I refused the money. I acted in this way so as to make as many men as possible to try to obtain me from doing free of charge what gave me pleasure. Do not think that I was rich and that was the reason why I did not take money. I lived by begging, often by spinning flax, but I had, in, I, I had an insatiable desire and an irrepressible passion for lying and filth. This was life to me. Every kind of abuse of nature I regarded as life. That is how I lived. Then one, summoner, then one summer I saw a large crowd of Libyans and Egyptians running towards the sea. I asked one of them, where are these men hurrying to? He replied, they are all going to Jerusalem for the exaltation of the precious and life-giving cross, which takes place in a few days. I said to him, Will they take me with them if I wish to go? No one will hinder thee if thou hast money to pay for the journey and for food. And I said to him, To tell thee the truth, I have no money, neither have I food. But I shall go with them and shall go aboard, and they shall feed me whether they want to or not. I have a body, they shall take it instead of pay for my journey. I was suddenly filled with a desire to go, Abba, to have more lovers who could satisfy my passion. I told thee, Abba Zosimus, not to force me to tell thee of my disgrace. God is my witness. I am afraid of defiling thee and the very air with my words. Zosimus, weeping, replied to her, Speak on, for God's sake, mother, speak, and do not break the thread of such an edifying tale. And resuming her story, she went on, that youth, on hearing my shameless words, laughed and went off, while I, throwing away my spinning wheel, ran off towards the sea in the direction which everyone seemed to be taking. And seeing some young men standing on the shore, about ten or more of them, full of vigor and alert in their movements, I decided that they would do for my purpose. It seemed that some of them were waiting for more travelers, whilst others had gone ashore. Shamelessly, as usual, I mixed with the crowd, saying, Take me with thee to the place thou art going to, thou wilt not find me superfluous. I also added a few more words, calling forth general laughter. Seeing my readiness to be shameless, they readily took me aboard the boat. Those who were expected came also, and, were sail and, and we set sail at once. How shall I relate to thee what happened after this? Whose tongue can tell, 
whose ears can take in all that took place on the boat during that voyage. And to all this I frequently forced those miserable youths, even against their own will. There is no mention or unmentionable depravity of which I was not their teacher. I am amazed, Abba, how the sea stood our licentiousness, how the earth did not open its jaws, and how it was and, and how it was that hell did not swallow me alive when I had entangled in my net so many souls. But I think God was seeking my repentance, for he does not desire the death of a sinner, but magnanimously awaits his return to him. At last we arrived in Jerusalem. I spent the days before the festival in the town, living the same kind of life, perhaps even worse. I was not content with the youths I had seduced at sea and who had helped me to get Jerusalem. Many others, citizens of the town and foreigners, I also seduced. The holy day of the exaltation of the cross dawned while I was still flying about, hunting for youths. At daybreak, I saw that everyone was hurrying to the church, so I ran with rest. When the hour, when the hour for the holy elevation approached, I was trying to make my way in with the crowd, which was struggling to get through the church doors. I had at last squeezed through with great difficulty, almost to the entrance of the temple, from which the life-giving tree of the cross was being shown to the people. But when I trod on the doorstep which everyone passed, I was stopped by some force which prevented me my entering. Meanwhile, I was brushed aside by the crowd and found myself standing alone in the porch. Thinking that this had happened because of my woman's weakness, I again, be I again began to work my way into the crowd, trying to elbow myself forward, but in vain I struggled. Again my feet trod on the doorstep step over which others were entering the church without encountering any obstacle. I alone seemed to remain unaccepted by the church. It was as if there was a detachment of soldiers standing there to oppose my entrance. Once again, I was excluded by the same mighty force, and again, I stood in the porch. When hearing about your advent, O Lord, the prophet Habakkuk of old was frightened, that you purposed from a virgin to be born, and appeared to humankind, and thus you said, O Lord, I have heard your report, and I am frightened. Glory to your strength, O Lord my God. On hearing about your advent, O Lord, the prophet Habakkuk of old was frightened, that you purposed from a virgin to be born, and appear, and appear to humankind. And thus he said, O Lord, I have heard your report, and I am frightened. Glory to your strength, O Lord my God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The end draws near, my soul, the end draws near, yet you do not care or make ready. The time grows short, rise up, the judge is at the door. The days of our life pass swiftly as a dream, as a flower. Why do we trouble ourselves in vain? Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O righteous judge, despise not your works, forsake not your creation. I have sinned as a man, I alone more than any other man. O oh, you who love mankind, but as Lord of all, you have the power to pardon sins. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me, awake my soul. Consider the actions which you have done, set them before your eyes, and let the drops of your tears fall. With boldness, the Christ of your deeds and thoughts, and so be justified. Have mercy on me, O oh God. God have mercy on me. No sin has there been in my life, no evil deed, no wickedness that I have not committed, O Savior. I have sinned as no one ever before, in mind, word, and intent, in disposition, thought, and act. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. For this I am condemned in my misery. For this I am convicted by the verdict of my own conscience, which is more compelling than all else in the world. 
O oh, my judge and redeemer, who know my heart, spare and deliver and save me in my wretchedness. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. The ladder which the great patriarch Jacob saw of old is an example. O oh, my soul, love approach to action and of ascent in knowledge. If then you wish to live rightly in action and knowledge, and contemplation be you made new. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. In privation, Jacob the patriarch entered the burning heat by day, and the frost by night, making daily gains of sheep and cattle, shepherd in wrestling and serving to win his two wives. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. By the two wives, understand action and knowledge in contemplation. Leah is action, for she had many children. And Rachel is knowledge, for she endured great toil. For without toil, O oh my soul, neither action nor contemplation will succeed. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. Be watchful, O oh my soul, be full of courage, like Jacob the great patriarch, that you may acquire action with knowledge, and be named Israel, the mind that sees God. So shall you reach by contemplation the innermost darkness and gain great merchandise. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The great patriarch hath the twelve patriarchs as children, and so he mystically established for you, my soul, a ladder of ascent through action. In his wisdom setting his children as steps by which you can mount upwards. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. You have rivaled Esau the hated, O oh my soul, and given the birthright of your first beauty to the supplanter. You have lost your father's blessing, and in your wretched nightness have been twice supplanted. In action and knowledge, therefore repent now. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Esau was called Edom because of his raging love for women, burning always with unrestrained desires, and stained with sensual pleasure. He was named Edom, which means the red heat of a soul that loves it. Have mercy mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. You have heard, O oh my soul, of Job justified on a dog now, but you have not imitated his fortitude in all your experiences and trials and temptations. You have not kept firmly to your purpose, but have proved inconstant. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. Once he sat upon a throne, but now he sits upon a dunghill, naked and covered with sores. Once he was blessed with many children, and admired by all, but suddenly he is childless and homeless. Yet he counted the dunghill as a palace, and his sores as pearls. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. A man of quick, great wealth and righteous, abounding in riches and cattle, both in royal dignity, in crown and in purple robe. Job became suddenly a beggar, stripped of wealth, king, wolf, glory, and kingship. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. If he who was righteous and blameless above all men did not escape the snares and pits of the deceiver, what will you do, wretched and sin-loving soul, when some sudden misfortune befalls you? Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have defiled my body, I have stained my spirit, and I am all covered with wounds. But as physician Christ, heal both body and spirit for me through repentance. Wash, purify, and cleanse me, O my Savior, and make me whiter than snow. 
Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Your body and your blood, O word, you offered at your crucifixion for the sake of all. Your body to fashion me, your blood to wash me clean, and you gave up your spirit of Christ to bring me to your Father. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O Creator, you work salvation in the midst of the earth that we might be saved. You were, you were crucified of your own will upon the tree, and eaten eat close until the end was opened. Things above and things below, the creation and all the peoples have been saved and worship you. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. May the blood from your side be to me a cleansing fount, and may the water that flows with it be a drink of forgiveness. May I be purified by both the word, anointed and refreshed, having as ointment, and drink your words of life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I am deprived of the bridal chamber, of the wedding and the supper. For lack of oil, my lamp has gone out. While I slept, the door was closed. The supper has been eaten. I am bound hand and foot and cast out. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. As a chalice, O my Savior, the Church has been granted your life-giving side, from which there flows down to us a twofold stream of forgiveness and knowledge representing the two covenants, the old and the new. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The time of my life is short, filled with trouble and evil. But accept me in repentance and call me back to knowledge. Let me not become the possession and food of the enemy. But, O Savior, take pity on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Now I speak boastfully with fullness of heart, yet all to no purpose and in vain. O righteous judge, who alone are compassionate, do not condemn me with the Pharisee, but grant me the abasement of the publican and number me with it. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I know, O compassionate Lord, that I have sinned and violated the vessel of my flesh. But accept me in repentance and call me back to knowledge. Let me not become the possession and food of the enemy, but, O oh, Savior, take pity on me. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. I have become my own idol, utterly defiling my soul with the passions. But accept me in repentance and call me back to knowledge. Let me not become the possession and food of the enemy, but Savior, take pity on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have not hearkened to your voice. I have not heeded your scripture, O giver of the law. But accept me in repentance and call me back to knowledge. Let me not become the possession and food of the enemy. But, O oh, Savior, take pity on me. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us. You live the bodyless life in the body, O oh, Holy Mary, and you receive great grace from God. Protect us who honor you with faith, and we entreat you. Deliver us by your prayers from every trial. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us. You were brought down into an abyss of great iniquity, yet not held fast within it, but with better intent you mounted through action to the height of virtue. Past all expectation, and the angels of Mary were amazed at you. 
Holy Father Andrew, pray to God for us. O Andrew, renowned among the fathers, glory of freed. As you stand before the Trinity, supreme in Godhead, in your prayers do not forget to ask that we be delivered from torment. For we call upon you with love as our advocate in heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Undivided, innocence, unconfused in persons, I confess you as God. Triune deity, one in kingship and throne. And to you I raise the great price, holy hymn that is sung on high. Both now and ever, and to the ages of ages, amen. You gave birth, and you and are a virgin, and in both you remain by nature inviolate. He who is born makes, makes new the laws of nature, and the womb brings forth without travail. When God so wills, the natural order is overcome, for he does whatever he wishes. Early in the morning, when I arise from night, give me your light, I pray, and direct me in the way of your divine commandments. And teach me always to do your will, O gracious Master. Early in the morning, when I arise from night, give me, give me your light, I pray, and direct me in the way of your divine commandments, and teach me always to do your will, O gracious Master. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. In night have I passed all my life, for the night of sin has covered me with darkness and thickness. But make me, O Savior, a son of the day. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. In my misery I followed Reuben's example, and devised a wicked and unlawful plan against the Most High God, defiling my bed as he defiled his father. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I confess to you, O Christ my King, I have sinned. And I have sinned like the brethren of Joseph, who once sold the fruit of purity and chastity. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. As a figure of the Lord, O my soul, o the righteous and gentle Joseph was sold into bondage by his brethren, but you sold yourself entirely to your sins. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O miserable and wicked soul, imitate the righteous and pure mind of Joseph, and do not live in wantonness sinfully indulging your disordered desires. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Once Joseph was cast into the pit, O Lord and Master, as a figure of your burial and resurrection. But what offering such as this shall I ever make to you? Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. <coughs> You have heard my soul of the basket of Moses, how he was born on the waves of the river as if in a shrine, and so he avoided the bitter execution of Pharaoh's decree. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. You have heard wretched soul of the midwives who once killed in its infancy the manly action of self-control, like great Moses, then be suckled on wisdom. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O miserable soul, you have not struck and killed the Egyptian mind, as did Moses the Great. Tell me then, how will you go to dwell through repentance in the wilderness empty of passions? Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Moses the Great went to dwell in the desert. Come seek to follow his way of life, my soul, that in contemplation you may attain the vision of God in the bush. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Picture to yourself, my soul, the rod of Moses striking the sea, 
and making heart the deep by the sign of the Holy Cross. Through the cross you also can do great things. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Aaron offered to God va- Aaron offered to God fire that was blameless and undefiled. But Hophni and Phineas brought to him, as you have done, my soul, strange fire and a polluted life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. In my soul and body, O Lord, I have become like Janus and Jambres, the magicians of Prophero. My will is heavy, and my mind is drowned beneath the waters. But come to my aid. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Woe is me, I have defiled my mind with filth. But I pray to you, O Master, wash me clean in the waters of my tears, and make the garment of my flesh white as snow. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. When I examine my actions, O Savior, I see that I have gone beyond all men in sin. For I knew and understood what I did, I was not sinning in ignorance. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Spare, O spare the work of your hands, O Lord. I have sinned, forgive me, for you alone are pure by nature, and none except you is free from defilement. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. You who are God, O Savior, were for my sake fashioned as I am. You perform miracles, healing lepers, giving strength to the paralyzed. Stopping the issue of blood when the woman touched the hem of your garment. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O wretched soul, do as the woman with an issue of blood. Run quickly, grasp the hem of the garment of Christ. So shall you be healed of your afflictions and hear him say, Your faith has saved you. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, do as the woman who was bowed down to the ground. Fall at the feet of Jesus, that he may make you straight again. And you shall walk upright upon the paths of the Lord. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. You are a deep well, O Master. Make, spring gu- make springs gush forth for me from your pure veins. That like the woman of Samaria, I may drink and thirst no more. For from you flow the streams of life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, O Master and Lord. May my tears be to me a siloam, that I also may wash clean the eyes of my heart. And with my mind behold you, the pre-eternal light. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us. O blessed saint, with the love beyond compare, you long to venerate the wood of the cross, and your desire was granted. Make me also worthy to attain the glory on high. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us. O blessed saint, with a love beyond compare, crossing the stream of the Jordan you found peace, escaping from the deadening pleasures of the flesh. Deliver us also from them, Holy Mary, by your intercession. Holy Father Andrew, pray to God for us, best of pastors, Chosen above all others, O wise Andrew, with great love and fear I beseech you through your intercessions. May I receive salvation and eternal life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We glorify you, O Trinity, the one God. Holy, holy, holy are you, Father, Son, and Spirit, simple essence and unity, worship forever. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages, amen. 
O virgin inviolate, and mother who has not known man, from you has God, the creator of the ages, taken human flesh, uniting to himself the nature of man. I cried aloud and shouted with all my heart unto the tender loving God, and he heard my voice from the lowest steps of Hades, and he raised my life from the pits of corruption. I cried aloud and shouted with all my heart unto the tender loving God, and he heard my voice from the lowest depths of Hades, and he raised my life from the pit of corruption. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I offer to you in purity, O Savior, the tears of my eyes and groanings from the depths of my heart. Crying, I have sinned against you, O God, be merciful to me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, like Dathan and Abiram. O my soul, you have become a stranger to your Lord. But from the low accepts of hell, cry out, spare me, that the earth may not be open and swallow you up. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Raging as a man in heaven, O my soul, you have become like a friend. So rescue your life like a heart from the nets, gaining wings through action and the mind's contemplation. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, the hand of Moses shall be our assurance. Pro Proving how God can cleanse the life of leprosy and make it white as snow. So do not despair of yourself, though you are leprous. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy, mercy on, on me. me. The waves of my sins, O Savior, have returned and suddenly engulfed me. As the waters of the Red Sea engulfed the Egyptians of old, and their charioteers. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like Israel before you, you made a foolish choice. My soul, instead of the divine manna, you senselessly preferred the pleasure, love, loving gluttony of the passions. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O oh, my soul, you preferred the swine's meat, the flesh pots and the food of Egypt to the food of heaven, as the ungrateful people did of old in the wilderness. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. O oh, my soul, you valued the wells of Canaanite thoughts more than the vain rock Jesus, the fountain of wisdom from which flow the rivers of divine knowledge. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. When your servant Moses struck the rock with his rod, he prefigured your life-giving sight, O Savior, from which we all draw the water of life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, like Joshua the son of Nun. Surge and spy out the land of your inheritance, O my soul, and take up your dwelling within it through obedience to the law. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Rise up and make war upon the passions of the flesh, as Joshua against Amalek, ever gaining the victory over the Gibeonites, your deceitful thoughts. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, pass through the flowing waters of time like the ark of old, and take possession of the land of promise, for God commands you. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. As you say, Peter, when he cried out, save me, Come quickly, O Savior, before it is too late, and save me from the beast. Stretch out your hand and lead me up from the deep of sin. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I know you as a calm haven, O Lord. 
O Lord, Lord Christ, come quickly before it is too late, and deliver me from the lowest depths of sin and despair. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O Savior, I am the coin marked with the king's likeness, which you lost of old. But a word like your lamp, the forerunner, and seek and find again your image. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us. Dear soul on fire, O Mary, you have shed, you have ever shed streams of tears to quench the burning of the passions. Grant the grace of these your tears to me also your servant. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us. Through the perfection of your earthly life, O Mother, you gained a heavenly freedom from the sinfulness of passion. In your intercessions, pray that the, the same freedom may be given to those who sing your praises. Holy Father Andrew, pray to God for us. Pastor and Bishop of Crete, intercessor for the inhabited earth. To you I run, O Andrew, and I cry, Deliver me, Father, from the depths of sin. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I am the Trinity, simple and undivided, yet divided in persons. And I am the unity by nature one, says the Father and the Son and the Divine Spirit. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages, amen. Your womb, your womb before, your womb bore God for us, fashioned in our shape. O Theotokos, pray to him as the creator of all, that we may be justified through your intercessions. Having repeated my attempt three or four times, at last I felt exhausted and had no more strength to push and to be pushed. So I went aside and stood in a corner of the porch, and only then with great difficulty it began to dawn on me, and I began to understand the reason why I was prevented from being admitted to see the life-giving cross. The word of salvation gently touched the eyes of my heart and revealed to me that it was my unclean life which barred the entrance to me. I began to weep and lament and beat my breast and to sigh from the depths of my heart. And so I stood weeping when I saw above me the icon of the Most Holy Mother of God, and turning to her my, bod my bodily and spiritually, spiritual eyes, I said, O Lady Mother of God, who gave birth in the flesh to God the Word, I know, oh, how well I know, that it is no honor or praise to thee when one so impure and depraved as I look up to thy icon over ever virgin, who didst keep thy body and soul in purity. Rightly do I inspire hatred and disgust before thy virginal purity. But I have heard that God, who was born of thee, became man on purpose to call sinners to repentance. Then help me, for I have no other help. Order the entrance of the church to be opened to me. Allow me to see the venerable tree on which he who was born of thee suffered in the flesh, and on which he shed his holy blood, for the redemption of sinners and for me, unworthy as I am. Be my faithful witness before thy Son, that I will never again defile my body by impurity of fornication, but as soon as I have seen the tree of the cross, I will renounce the world and its temptations, and will go wherever thou wilt lead me. Thus I spoke, and as if inquiring some hope and firm faith and feeling some confidence in the mercy of the Mother of God, I left the place where I stood praying, and I went again and mingled with the crowd that was pushing its way into the temple. And no one seemed to thwart me, no one hindered my entering the church. As I was possessed with trembling and was almost in delirium, having gotten as far as the doors which I could not reach before, as if the same force which had hindered me cleared the way for me, I now entered without difficulty and found myself within the holy place. And so it was I saw the life-giving cross. I saw too the mysteries of God and how the Lord accepts repentance. Throwing myself to the ground, I worshipped that holy earth and kissed it with trembling. Then I came out of the church and went to her who had promised to be my security, to the place where I had sealed my vow. And bending my knees before the Virgin Mother of God, I addressed to her such words as these, O loving lady, thou hast shown me thy great love for all men. Glory to God who receives the repentance of sinners through thee. 
What more can I re recollect or say when I, I who am so sinful, it is time for me, O Lady, to fulfill my vow according to thy witness. Now lead me by thy hand along the path of repentance. And at these words I heard a voice from on high. If thou wilt cross the Jordan, thou wilt find glorious rest. Hearing this voice and having faith that it was for me, I cried, I cried to the Mother of God, O Lady, Lady, do not forsake me. With these words, I left the porch of the church and set off on my journey. As I was leaving the church, a stranger glanced at me and gave me three coins, saying, Sister, take these. And after taking the money, I bought three loaves and took them with me on my journey as a blessed gift. I asked the person who sold the bread, Which way is the Jordan? I was directed to the city gate, which led that way. Running on, I passed the gates and still weeping went on my journey. Those I met asked the way, and after walking the rest of that day, I think it was nine o'clock when I saw the cross, I at length reached at sunset the church of St. John the Baptist, which stood on the banks of the Jordan. After praying in the temple, I went down to the Jordan and rinsed my faith and hands in its holy waters. I partook of the holy and life-giving mysteries of the church, of the forerunner, and ate half of one of my loaves. Then after drinking some water from Jordan, I lay down and passed the night on the ground. In the morning I found a small boat and crossed to the opposite bank. I again prayed to Our Lady to lead me whither she wished. Then I found myself in this desert, and since then up to this day I am estranged from all, keeping away from people and running away from everyone. And here I live clinging to my God, who saves all who turn to him from faint-heartedness and storms. Zosimos asked her, How many years have gone by since that began to live in this desert? She replied, Forty-seven years have gone by, I think, since I left the holy city. Zosimus asked, But what food dost thou find? The woman said, I had two and a half loaves when I crossed the Jordan. Soon they dried up and became hard as rock. Eating a little, I gradu gradually finished them after a few years. Zosimus asked, Can it be that without getting ill thou hast lived so many years thus, without, su without suffering in any way from such complete change? The woman answered, Thou dost remind me, Zosimus, of what I dare not speak of. For when I recall all the dangers which I overcame, and all the violent thoughts which confused me, I am again afraid that they will take possession of me. Zosimus asked, Do not hide anything from me. Speak to me without concealing anything. And she said to him, Believe me, Abba, seventeen years I passed in this desert, fighting wild beasts, mad desires, and passions. When I was about to partake of food, I used to begin to regret the meat and fish of which I had so much in Egypt. I regretted also not having wine, which I loved so much. For I drank a lot of wine when I lived in the world, while here I had not even water. I used to burn and succumb with, sir, with thirst. The mad desire for prof profligate, profligate songs, which also entered me and confused me greatly, edging me on to sing satanic songs, which I had learned once. But when such desires entered me, I struck myself on the breast and remembered of the vow which I had made when going into the desert. In my thoughts, I returned to the icon of the Holy Mother of God, which had received me, and to her cried in prayer. I implored her to chase away the thoughts which to my miserable soul was succumbing. And after weeping for long and beating my breast, I used to see the light at last which seemed to shine on me from everywhere. And after the violent storm, lasting calm descended. And how can I tell thee about the thoughts which urged me on to fornication? Oh, how can I express them to thee, Abba? A fire was kindled in my miserable heart, which seemed to burn me up completely, and to awaken me a thirst for embraces. As soon as this craving came to me, I flung myself on the earth and watered it with my tears, as if I saw before me my witnesses, who had appeared to me in my disobedience, and who seemed to threaten punishment for the crime. And I did not arise from the ground. Sometimes I lay thus prostrate for a day and a night, until a calm and sweet, sweet light descended and enlightened me and chased away the thoughts that possessed me. But always I turned to the eyes of my mind to my protectress, asking her to extend help to the one who was seeking fast in the waves of the desert. And as I always had her as my helper and the acceptor of my repentance, and thus I lived for seventeen years amid constant dangers. And since then, even till now, the Mother of God helps me in everything and leads me as it were by the hand. Sosimos asked, Can it be that thou didst not need food and clothing? She answered, After finishing the loaves I had, of which I spoke, for seventeen years I have fed on herbs and all that could be found in the desert. The clothes I had when I crossed the Jordan became torn and worn out. I suffered greatly from the cold and greatly from the extreme heat. At times the sun burned me up and at other times I shivered from the frost. 
and frequently falling to the ground, I lay without breath, um, breath and without motion. I struggled with many afflictions and with terrible temptations. And from that time till now, the power of God in numerous ways has guarded my sinful soul and my humble body. When I only reflect on the evils from which our Lord had delivered me, I have imperishable food for the hope of salvation. I am fed and clothed by the all-powerful word of God, the Lord of all. For it is not by bread alone that man lives, and those who have stripped off the rags of sin have no refuge, hiding themselves in the clefts of the rock. Hearing that she cited words of scriptures from Moses and Job, Sosimos asked her, And so thou hast read the Psalms and the other books? She smiled at this and said to the elder, Believe me, I have not seen, seen a human face ever since I crossed the Jordan, except thy thighs today. I have not seen a beast or a living being ever since I came into the desert. I have never learned from books. I have never even heard anyone who sang and read from them. But the word of God, which is alive and active, by itself teaches a man knowledge. And so this is the end of my tale. But as I asked thee in the beginning, so even now I implore thee for the sake of the incarnate word of God to pray to the Lord for me, whom such a sinner. Thus concluding her tale, she bowed down before him, and with tears the elder exclaimed, Blessed is God who creates the great and wondrous, the glorious and marvelous without end. Blessed is God who has shown me how he rewards those who fear him. Truly, O Lord, thou dost not forsake those who seek thee. And the woman, not allowing the elder to bow down before her, said, I beg thee, Holy Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, tell no one what thou hast heard, until God delivers me of this earth. And now depart in peace, and again next year thou shalt see me, and I thee, if God will preserve us in his great mercy. But for God's sake, do as I ask thee. Next year during Lent, do not cross the Jordan, as is customary in thy monastery. Sosimus was amazed to hear that she knows the rules of the monastery, and could only say, Glory to God, who bestows great gifts on those who love him. She continued, Remain, Abba, in the monastery, and even if thou dost wish to depart, thou wilt not be to do so. At the sunset of the holy day of the Last Supper, put some of the life-giving body and blood of Christ into a holy vessel worthy to hold such mysteries for me, and bring it. And wait for me on the banks of the Jordan, adjoining the inhabited parts of the land, so that I may come and partake of the life-giving gifts. For since the time I communicated in the temple of the forerunner, before crossing the Jordan, even to this day, I have not approached the holy mysteries, and I thirst for them with irrepressible love and longing, and therefore I ask and implore thee to grant my wish. Bring me the life-giving mysteries at the very hour when our Lord made his disciples partake of his divine supper. Tell John the abbot of the monastery where thou dost live, Look to thyself and thy brothers, for there is much that needs correction. Only do not say this now, but when God guides thee. Pray for me. With these words, she vanished into the depths of the desert, and Sosimus, falling down on his knees and bowing down to the ground which, on which she had stood, set glory and thanks to God. And after wandering through the desert, he returned to the monastery on the day all the brothers returned. For the whole year he kept silent, not daring to tell anyone of what he had seen, but in his soul he prayed to God to give him another chance of seeing the ascetic's dear face. And when at length the first Sunday of the great fast came, all went out into the desert with the customary prayers and singing of the psalms. Only Sosimus was held back by illness, he lay in fever, and he remembered what the saint had said to him, and even if thou dost wish to depart, thou wilt not be able to do so. Many days passed, and after last recovering from his illness, he remained in the monastery. And when again the monks returned, and at the last day of the and the day of the last supper dawned, he did as he had been ordered, and placing some of the most pure body and blood into a small chalice, and putting some grapes and dates and lentils soaked in water into a small basket, he departed for the desert and reached the banks of the Jordan and sat down to wait for the saint. He waited a long while and began to doubt. Then raising his eyes to heaven, he began to pray, Grant me, O Lord, to behold that which thou hast allowed to behold once. Do not let me depart in vain, bearing the burden of my sins. And when another thought struck him, And what if she does come? There is no boat. How will she cross the Jordan to come to me, who am so unworthy? And as he was pondering thus, he saw the holy woman appear and stand on the other side of the river. So she must got up rejoicing and glorifying and thanking God. And again the thought came to him that she could not cross the Jordan. Then he saw that she made the sign of the cross over the waters of the Jordan. 
and the night was a moonlight one, as he related afterwards. And then she at once stepped onto the waters and began walking across the surface toward him. And when he wanted to prostrate himself, she cried to him while still walking on the water, What art thou doing, Abba? Thou art a priest and carrying the divine gifts. He obeyed her, and on reaching the shore, she said to the elder, Bless father of me. He answered her trembling, for a state of confusion had overcome him at the sight of the miracle. Truly God did not lie when he promised that when we purify ourselves we shall be like him. Glory to thee, Christ our God, who has shown me through this thy slave how far away I stand from per perfection. Here the woman asked him to say the creed in our father. He began, she finished the prayer, and according to the custom of that time, gave him the kiss of peace on the lips. Having partaken of the holy mysteries, she raised her hands to heaven and sighed with tears in her eyes, exclaiming, Now let us thy servant depart in peace, O Lord, according to thy word, for my eyes have seen thy salvation. Then she said to the elder, Forgive me, Abba, for asking thee, but fulfill another wish of mine. Go now to the monastery and let God's grace guard thee, and next year come again to the same place where I first met thee. Come for God's sake, for thou shalt see again see me, for such is the will of God. He said to her, From this day on I would like to follow thee and to always see thy holy face, but now fulfill the one and only wish of an old man, and take a little of the food I have brought for thee. And he showed her the basket, which he had, while she just touched the lentils with the tips of her fingers, and taking up three grains, said that the Holy Spirit guards the substance of the soul unpolluted. Then she said, Pray for God's sake for me, and remember a miserable wretch. Touching the saint's feet and asking for her prayers for the church, the kingdom, and himself, he let her depart with tears, while he went off sighing and sorrowful, for he could not hope to vanquish the invincible. Meanwhile, she again made the sign of the cross over the Jordan and stepped over the waters and crossed over as before. And the elder returned with joy and terror, accusing himself of not having asked the saint her name, but he decided to do so next year. And when another year had passed, he again went into the desert. He reached the same spot, but he could see no sign of anyone. So raising his eyes to heaven as before, he prayed, Show me, O Lord, thy pure treasure, which thou hast concealed in the desert. Show me, I pray thee, the angel in the flesh, of which the world is not worthy. Then on the opposite bank of the river, her face hit, turned towards the rising sun, he saw the saint lying dead. Her hands were crossed according to the custom, and her face was turned towards the east. Running up, he shed tears over the saint's feast and kissed them, daring to, not daring to touch anything else. For a long time he wept, and then reciting the appointed psalms, he said the burial prayers, and he thought to himself, must I bury the body of a saint, or will this be contrary to her wishes? And then he saw the words traced upon the ground by her head, Abbas Osimos, bury on this spot the body of humble Mary, return to dust that which is dust, and pray to the Lord for me, who departed in the month of Fermudin of Egypt, called April by the Romans, on the first day, on the very night of our Lord's Passion, after having partaken of the divine mysteries. Reading this, the elder was glad to know the saint's name. He understood, too, that as soon as he, she had partaken of the divine mysteries on the shore of the Jordan, she was at once transported to the place where she died. The distance which Sosimus had taken 20 days to cover, Mary had evidently trans transversed, traversed an, an hour and had once surrendered her soul to God. Then Sosimus thought, It is time to do as she wished, but how am I to dig a grave with nothing in my hands? Then he saw nearby a small piece of wood left by some traveler in the desert. Picking it up, he began to dig the ground. But the earth was hard and dry and did not yield to the efforts of the elder. He grew tired and covered with sweat. He sighed from the depths of his soul, and lifting up his eyes, he saw a big lion standing close to the saint's body and licking her feet. At the sight of the lion, he trembled with fear, especially when he called to mind Mary's words that she had never seen wild beasts in the desert. But guarding himself with the sign of the cross, the thought came to him that the power of the one lying there would protect him and keep him unharmed. Meanwhile, the lion drew near to him, expressing affection by every movement. Sosimo said to the lion, The Great One ordered that her body was to be buried, but I am old and have not the strength to dig the grave, for I have no spade, and it would take me too long to go and get one. So canst thou carry out the work with thy claws? And then we could commit to the earth the mortal temple of the saint. 
while he was speaking to, with the lion, with it, uh, his front paws began to dig a hole deep enough to bury the body. Again the elder washed the feet of the saint with his tears, and calling on her to pray for all, covered the body with earth as in the presence of the lion. It was as it had been, naked and uncovered by anything but the tattered cloak which had been given to her. By Sosimus and with, mit, and with which Mary, turning away, had managed to cover part of her body. Then both departed. The lion went off to the depths of the desert like a lamb, while Sosimus returned to the monastery, glorifying and blessing Christ our God. And on returning, reaching the monastery, he told all the brothers about everything, and all marveled on hearing of God's miracles, and with fear and love they kept the memory of the saint. Abbot John, a Saint Mary, had previously told Abba Sosimus, found a number of things wrong in the monastery, and got rid of them with God's help. And Saint Zosimos died in the same monastery, almost attaining the age of a hundred, and passed to eternal life. The monks kept the story without writing it down, and passed it on by word of mouth to one another. But I, as soon as I heard it, wrote it down. Perhaps someone else, better informed, has already written the life of the saint, but as far as I could, I have recorded everything, putting truth above all else. May God, who works amazing miracles and generously bestows gifts upon those who turn to him in faith, reward those who seek light for themselves in this story, who read, hear, read, and are zealous to write it, and he may grant them the lot of blessed Mary together with all who at different times have pleased God by their pious thoughts and labors. And let us all give glory to God, the eternal King, that he may grant us to his mercy in the day of judgment for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom belongs all glory, honor, dominion, and adoration, with the Eternal Father and the Holy and Life-Giving Spirit, now and always and through all ages. Amen. I Sores have I added wounds, but in your compassion have mercy upon me, O God of our fathers. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The secrets of my heart have I confessed to you, my judge. See my abasement, see my 
affliction and attend to my judgment now. And in your compassion have mercy upon me, O God of our fathers. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. When Saul once lost his father's asses in searching for them, he found himself proclaimed as king. But watch my soul, lest unknown to yourself, you prefer your animal appetites to the kingdom of Christ. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. David, the forefather of God, once sinned doubly, pierced with the arrow of adultery and the spear of murder. But you, my soul, are more gravely sick than he, for worse than any acts are the impulses of your will. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. David was strolling sin to sin, adding murder to fornication. Yet then he showed at once a twofold repentance. But you, my soul, have done worse things than he, yet you have not repented before God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. David once composed a hymn depicting the action he had done, and he condemned it, crying, Have mercy on me, for against you only have I sinned, O God of all, cleanse me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. When the ark was being carried in a cart, and the ox stumbled, Uzzah did no more than to touch it, but the wrath of God God smote him. O oh, my soul, flee from his presumption, and respect with reverence the things of God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. You have heard of Absalom and how he rebelled against nature. You know of the unholy deeds by which he defiled his father David's bed. Yet you have followed him in his passionate and sensual desires. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, you have subjected your freak dignity to your body. For you for you found in the enemy another Ahitophel, and agreed to all his counsels. But Christ himself has brought them to nothing and saved you from them all. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Solomon the Wonderful, who was full of the grace of wisdom, once to evil in the sight of heaven, and turned away from God. You have become like him, O my soul, by your accursed life. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Carried away by sensual passions, he defiled himself. Alas, the lover of wisdom became a lover of harlots and a stranger to God. And you, my soul and mind, have imitated him through your shameful desires. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O my soul, you have rivaled, rivaled Rehoboam, who paid no attention to his father's counselors. And Jeroboam, that evil servant and renegade of old, but flee from their example and cry to God, I have sinned, take pity on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Alas, my soul, you have rivaled Ahab in guilt. You have become a dwelling place of carnal defilements and shameful vessel of the passions. But groan from the depths of your heart and confess your sins to God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Elijah once destroyed with fire a hundred of Jezebel's servants, and he slew the prophets of shame as a rebuke to Ahab. But flee from the example of both of them, my soul, and be strong. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Heaven is close to you, my soul, and the famine from God has seized you, for you have been disobedient, 
as Ahab was to the words of Elijah the Tishbite. But imitate the widow of Zarephath, and feed the prophet's soul. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. By deliberate choice, my soul, you incurred the guilt of Manasseh, setting up the passions as idols, and multiplying abominations. But with fervent heart, emulate his repentance, and acquire compunction. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I fall before you, and as tears I offer you my words. I have sinned as the harlot never sinned, and I have transgressed as no other man on earth. But take pity on your creature, O Master, and call me back. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have discolored your image and broken your commandments. All my beauty is destroyed, and my lamp is quenched by the passions of Savior. But take pity on me as David sings, and restore to me your joy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Turn back, repent, uncover all that you have hidden. Say to God to whom all things are known. You alone know my secret, O Savior, have mercy on me as David sings according to your mercy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. My days have vanished as a dream of one awaking, and so like Hezekiah I weep on my bed, that years may be added to my life. But what I say I will come to me, O my soul, except the God of all. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us, Raising your cry to the pure Mother of God, who drove back the fury of the passions that violently assailed you, and put to shame the enemy who sought to make you stumble. But give your help in trouble, now to me also your servant. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us. He whom you loved, O Mother whom you desired, in whose footsteps you followed, he it was who found you and gave you repentance. For he is compassionate God, pray to him, O Mary, without ceasing, that we may be delivered from passions and distress. Holy Father Andrew, pray to God for us. Set me firmly on the rock of faithful Father through your intercessions. Fence me round with fear, fence me round with fear of God, O Andrew. Grant repentance to me, now I beseech you, and deliver me from the snare of the enemies that seek my life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, O simple and undivided Trinity, O holy and consubstantial unity. You are praised as light and lights, one holy and three holies. Sing, O my soul, and glorify life and life's the God of all. Hold now and ever and to the ages of ages, amen. We praise you, we bless you, we venerate you, O Mother of God. For you gave birth to one of the undivided Trinity, your Son and God. And you open the heavenly palaces to us on earth. Him whom the hosts of the heavens glorify, at whom quake the cherubim and the seraphim, every breath and creation. Extol him now and bless him, and exalt supremely unto all the ages. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have sinned, O Savior, have mercy on me. Awaken my mind and turn me back. Accept me in repentance and take pity on me as I cry. I have sinned against you, save me, I 
I have done evil, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Riding in the chariot of the virtues, Elijah was lifted up to heaven, high above earthly things. Reflect, O my soul, on his ascent. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. With the mantle of Elijah, Elisha made the stream of the Jordan stand still on either side. But in this grace, my soul, you have no share because of your greed and uncontrolled desires. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Elisha once took up the mantle of Elijah and received a double portion of grace from the Lord. But in this grace, my soul, you have no share because of your greed and uncontrolled desires. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The Shunammite woman gladly entertained the righteous prophet. But in your house, my soul, you have not welcomed stranger or traveler, and so you shall be cast out, weeping from the bridal chamber. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O wretched soul, you have always imitated the unclean thoughts of Gehazi. Cast from you, at least in your old age, his love of money. We from the fire of hell, turning away from your wickedness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. You have followed Uzziah, my soul, and have his leprous, leprosy in double form. For your thoughts are wicked, and your, likes un and your acts unlawful. Leave what you have and hasten to repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, O my soul. You have heard how the men of Nineveh repented before God in sackcloth and ashes. Yet you have not followed them, but are more wicked than all who sinned before the law and after. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. You have heard my soul, how Jeremiah in the mighty pit cried out with lamentations for the city of Zion, and as to be given tears, follow his life of lamentation and be saved. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Jonah fled to Tarshish, foreseeing the conversion of the men of Nineveh. For as a prophet, he knew the loving kindness of God, but he was jealous that his prophecy should not be proved false. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. My soul, you have heard how Daniel stopped the mouths of the wild beast in the lion's den. And you know how the young men with Azariah went through their faith the flames of the fiery furnace. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. All the names of the Old Testament have I set before you, my soul, as an example. Imitate the holy acts of the righteous and flee from the sins of the wicked. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O righteous judge and Savior, have mercy on me and deliver me from the fire that threatens me from the punishment that I deserve to suffer at the judgment. Before the end comes, grant me remission through virtue and repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like the robber, I cry to you, remember me. Like Peter, I weep bitterly. Like the publican, I call out, forgive me, Savior. Like the harlot, I shed tears. Accept my lamentation, as once you accepted the entreaties of the woman of Canaan. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O Savior, heal the putrefaction of my humble soul, for you are, for you are the one physician 
applied bandages and foreign oil and wine, works of repentance and compunction with tears. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Like the woman of Canaan, I cry to you. Have mercy on me, son of David. Like the woman with an issue of blood, I touch the hem of your garment. I weep as Martha and Mary wept for Lazarus. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. As precious ointment, O Savior, I empty on your head the alabaster box of my tears. Like the harlot, I cry out to you, seeking your mercy. I bring my prayer and ask to receive forgiveness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. No one has sinned against you as I have, yet accept even me, compassionate Savior. For I repent in fear and cry with longing. Against you alone have I sinned, I have transgressed, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Spare the work of your hands, O Savior. And as a shepherd seek the lost sheep that has gone astray, snatch me from the wolf and make me a nursling in the pasture of your own flock. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. When you sit on your throne, O merciful judge, and reveal your dread glory, O Christ, what fear there will be then, when the furnace burns with fire, and I'll shrink back in terror before your judgment seat. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us, the mother of the light that never sets, illumined you and freed you from the darkness of the passions. O Mary, who received the grace of the Spirit, give light to those who praise you with faith. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us. The Holy Zosimus was struck with amazement. O Mother, beholding in you a wonder truly strange and new, for he saw an angel in the body and was filled with astonishment, praising Christ unto all ages. Holy Father Andrew, pray to God for us, since you have fullness before the Lord, O Andrew, Honored and renowned of greed, I beseech you, intercede that I may find deliverance from the bonds of iniquity. Through your prayers, O teacher, glory of holy Mom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Father, without beginning, co-eternal Son, and loving Comforter, the Spirit of right Righteousness, Begetter of the Word of God, Word of the Eternal Father, Spirit living and creative. O Trinity in unity, have mercy on me. O thou and ever into the ages of ages, amen. Eyes from purple silk, O undefiled virgin. The spiritual robe of Emmanuel, his flesh, was woven in your womb. Therefore we honor you as Theotokos in very truth. The birth is ineffable, conceived without the seed of man, the unwed mothers. Childbirth was free of all, cor all corruption, the birth of God makes new again the natures. And thus in orthodox manner all generations magnify you as the mother and the bride of God. The birth is ineffable, conceived without the seed of man. The unwed mother's childbirth was free of all corruption, the birth of God makes new again the natures, and thus in orthodox manner all generations magnify you as the mother and the bride of God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. My mind is wounded, my body has grown feeble, my spirit is sick. 
My speech has lost its power. My life is dead. The end is at the door. What shall you do then, miserable soul, when the judge comes to examine your deeds? Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have put before you my soul, Moses' account of the creation of the world, and after that all the recognized scriptures that tell you the story of the righteous and the wicked. But you, my soul, have followed the second of these, not the first, and have sinned against God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The law is powerless, the gospel is, no, is of no effect, and the whole of scripture is ignored by you. The prophets and all the words of the righteous are useless. Your wounds, my soul, have been multiplied. And there is no physician to heal you. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I bring you, O my soul, examples from the New Testament to lead you to compunction. Follow the examples of the righteous, turn away from the sinful, and through prayers and fasting, through chastity and reverence, win back Christ's mercy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Christ became a child and shared in my flesh, and willingly he performed all that belongs to my nature, only without sin. He set before you, my soul, an example, an image of his condescension. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Christ became man, calling to repentance, thieves and harlots. Repent, my soul, the door of the kingdom is already open. And Pharisees and publicans and adulterers pass through it before you, changing their lives. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Christ saved the wise men and called the shepherds. He revealed as martyrs a multitude of young children. He glorified the elder and the aged widow. But you, my soul, have not followed their lives and actions. Woe to you when you are judged. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The Lord fasted forty days in the wilderness, and at the end of them he was hungry, the showing that he is man. Do not be dismayed, my soul, if the enemy attacks you. Through prayer and fasting, drive him away. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. Christ was tempted, the devil tempted him, showing him the stones that they might be made bread. He led him up into a mountain to see in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. O oh, my soul, look with fear on what happened. Watch and pray every hour to God. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. The dove who loved the wilderness, the lamp of Christ, the voice of one crying aloud, was heard preaching repentance. But Herod sinned with Herodias. O oh, my soul, see that you are not trapped in the snares of the lawless, but embrace repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The forerunner of grace went to dwell in the wilderness, and Judea and all Samaria ran to hear him. They confessed their sins and were baptized eagerly, but you, my soul, have not imitated them. Have mercy on me, O oh God, have mercy on me. Marriage is honorable, and the marriage bed undefiled. For on both Christ has given his blessing, eating in the flesh at the wedding in Cana, turning the water into wine, and revealing his first miracle to bring you, my soul, to a change of life. 
Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Christ gave strength to the paralyzed man, and he took up his bed. He raised from the dead the young man, the son of the widow, and the centurion servant. He appeared to the woman of Samaria, and spoke to you, my soul of worship and spirit. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. By the touch of the hem of his garment, the Lord healed the woman with an issue of blood. He cleansed lepers and gave sight to the blind, and made the walk la- and made the lame walk upright. He cured by his words the deaf and the dumb, and the woman bowed to the ground to bring you, wretched soul, to salvation. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Healing sickness, Christ the Word, preached the good tidings to the poor. He cured the crippled, ate with publicans, and conversed with sinners. With the touch of his hand, he brought back the departed soul of of Jairus' daughter. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The publican was saved, and the harlot turned to chastity. But the Pharisee, with his boasting, was condemned. For the first cried, Be merciful, and the second, Have mercy on me. The third said, Boasting, I thank you, O God, and other words of madness. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Zacchaeus was a publican, yet he was saved. But Simon the Pharisee went astray. While the harlot received remission and release from him, who has the power to forgive sins, make haste, O my soul, to follow her example. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O wretched soul, you have not acted like the harlot, who took the alabaster box of precious ointment and anointed with her tears and anointed with tears, and wiped with their hair the feet of the Lord. And he tore in pieces the record of her previous sins. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. You know, O my soul, how the cities were cursed, to which Christ preached the gospel. Fear their example, lest you suffer the same punishment. For the Master likened them to Sodom, and condemned them to hell. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Be not overcome by despair, my soul. For you have heard of the faith of the women of Canaan, and how through it her daughter was healed by the word of God. Cry cry out from the depth of our heart, Save me also, son of David, as she once cried to cry. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. O son of David, with your word you, you healed the possessed. Take pity on me, save me, and have mercy. Let me hear your compassionate voice, speak to me as to the robber. Truly I say to you, you shall be with me in paradise when I come in my glory. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. A robber accused you, a robber confessed your Godhead, for both were hanging beside you on the cross. Open to me also, O Lord of many mercies, the door of your glorious kingdom, as once it was open to your robber, who acknowledged you with faith as God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Creation was in anguish, seeing you crucified. Mountains and rocks were split from fear, the earth quaked, and hell was despoiled. The light grew dark in the daytime, beholding you, O Jesus, nailed in the flesh. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Do not demand from me worthy fruits of repentance. 
for my strength has failed within me. Give me an ever contrite heart in poverty of spirit, that I may offer these to you as an acceptable sacrifice, O only Savior. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, O my judge, who know me. When you come again with the angels to judge the whole world, look on me then with your eye of mercy and spare me. Take pity on me, Jesus, for I have sinned more than any other man. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us. By your strange way of life you struck with all wonder, both the hosts of angels and the gatherings of mortal men. For you surpassed nature and lived as, no, as though no longer in the body. Like a bodiless angel, you walked upon the Jordan with your feet, o, with your feet, O Mary, and crossed over it. Holy Mother Mary, pray to God for us. O Holy Mother, call down the gracious mercy of the Creator upon us who sing your praises, that we may be set free from the sufferings and afflictions that assail us. So without ceasing, delivered from temptations, we shall magnify the Lord who glorified you. Holy Father Andrew, pray to God for us. Venerable Andrew, Father, thrice blessed, pastor of greed, cease not to offer prayer for us who sing your praises, that we may be delivered from all danger and distress from corruption and sin, who honor your memory with faith. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Trinity in one essence, unity in three persons, we sing your praises. We glorify the Father, we magnify the Son, we worship the Holy Spirit, truly one God by nature. Life and life's kingdom without end. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Watch over your city, O pure Mother of God. For by you she reigns in faith, by you she is made strong, by you she is victorious, putting to flight every temptation despoiling the enemy and ruling her subjects. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, forgive our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. My soul, my soul, rise up. Why are you sleeping? The end draws near, and soon you shall be troubled. Watch then that Christ your God may spare you, for he is everywhere present and fillest all things. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. O Christ our God, who at all times and at every hour, both in heaven and on earth, are worshipped and glorified, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and compassion, who love the just and show mercy to the sinners, who call all men to salvation through the promise of blessings to come. Do you, the same Lord, receive also our supplications at this present time, 
and direct our lives according to your commandments. Sanctify our souls, purify our bodies, set our minds right, clear up our thoughts, and deliver us from every sorrow, evil, and distress. Surround us with your holy angels, so that being guarded and guided by their presence, we may arrive at the unity of the faith and the knowledge of your ineffable glory. For blessed are you unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Greater in honor than the cherubim, and in glory greater beyond compare than the seraphim, you without corruption gave birth to God the Word, and are truly Theotokos. You do we magnify. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. May God have compassion on us and bless us. May his face shine upon us and have mercy on us. Amen. O Lord and Master of my life, do not permit the spirit of laziness and meddling, the lust for power and idle talk to come into me. Instead, grant me your servant, the spirit of prudence, humility, patience, and love. Yes, Lord and King, give me the power to see my own faults and not to judge my brother, for you are blessed until the ages of ages. Amen. O oh God, be gracious to me, the sinner. 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 God be gracious unto me, the sinner. God be gracious unto me, the sinner, and have mercy upon me. Yes, Lord and King, give me the power to see my own faults, and not to judge my brother, for you are blessed until the ages of ages. Amen. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, forgive our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. A spotless, unstained, incorruptible, undefiled, pure virgin. Lady Bride of God, who through your wondrous birth-giving united God, the Word, with mankind, and linked the falling nature of our human race with the heavenly, the only hope of the hopeless and the help of the persecuted, the ready support of those who seek refuge in you, and the shelter of all Christians, do not despise me, the wretched sinner, who have defiled myself with shameful thoughts and words and deeds, and through the negligence of thought have become a slave to the pleasures of life. But as the mother of our compassionate God and a friend of man, have compassion on me, the sinner and prodigal, and accept this prayer from my impure lips, and using your motherly standing, entreat your Son and Master and Lord to open unto me the depths of his loving goodness, and overlooking my innumerable faults, to return me to repentance and make me a worthy servant of his commandments. Stand by me forever in this life as a merciful and compassionate and good and lovingly warm protector and helper by repulsing the assaults of the adversary and leading me toward salvation, and at the time of my death, by embracing my miserable soul and driving far from it the dark faces of the evil demons, and at the awesome day of judgment, by redeeming me from e eternal hell <clears throat> and proclaiming me an heir of the ineffable glory of your Son and our God, may I enjoy such fate, my Lady, most holy Theotokos, through your intercession and protection, through the grace and love for mankind of your only begotten Son, our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, to whom belong all glory, honor, and worship, together with his beginningless Father and the all-holy and good and life-giving Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. And grant to us, Master, as we depart for sleep, rest of body and soul, and preserve us from the gloomy slumber of sin and from every dark and nocturnal pleasure. Arrest the drives of passion, extinguish the burning arrows of the evil one, which insidiously fly in our direction, 
suppress the rebellions of our flesh, and calm our every earthly and material thought. And grant us, O God, alert mind, prudent thinking, sober heart, light sleep free of any satanic fantasy. Awake us at the time of prayer rooted in your commandments, and having unbroken within us the remembrance of your ordinances. Grant that we may sing your glory through the night by the praising and blessing and glorifying of your most honorable and majestic name, of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Most glorious every virgin, blessed Theotokos, bring our prayer before your Son and our God, and entreat him through you to save our souls. The Father is my hope, the Son is my refuge, the Holy Spirit is my shelter. Holy Trinity, glory to you. O Mother of God, I have committed my every hope wholly unto you. Keep me under your shelter. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Father, bless. May Christ, our true God, through the intercessions of his all-pure and all-immaculate Holy Mother, of St. Catherine, the great martyr, patroness and protectress of this holy church, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, as he is good and benevolent and, and merciful God. Let us pray for the peace of the world. Lord, have mercy. For the pious and orthodox Christians. Lord, have mercy. For Archbishop Yerasimov. Lord, have mercy. For our nation. Lord, have mercy. For the armed forces. Lord, have mercy. For our absent fathers, brothers, and sisters. Lord, have mercy. For those who help us and those who serve us. Lord, have mercy. For those who hate us and those who love us. Lord, have mercy. For those who have asked us the unworthy to pray for them Lord, have mercy. for the release of captives Lord, have mercy. for those sailing the sea for those laid up with illnesses Lord, have mercy. let us also pray for the abundance of the fruits of the earth Lord, have mercy. and for all our fathers and brethren departed this life those who lie here in peace in the orthodox everywhere Lord have mercy let us say for ourselves also Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Lord have mercy through the prayers of our holy fathers O Lord Jesus Christ our God have mercy upon us and save us Amen may the Holy Trinity protect you and bless you always now and forever Amen be seated just for one moment <clears throat> The life of St. Mary of Egypt is a gift from God to all of mankind from the time of her life and the writing of her story and the passing down of the story over the centuries. And what it shows us is that no matter what our life was like before we've come to Christ, no matter what sins we've committed, no matter how atrocious or how vile of a life that we may have lived, that through humility and through repentance and through self-reproach we can become bearers of the Spirit of Christ in our heart. This is something that our Lord knew that we needed and so he has raised up Saint Mary and other saints in the church who have lived lives that were horrible in many ways and yet they became saints of the church. This is the great hope that all of us have in Christ that again through humility and repentance and self-reproach by humbling ourselves that Christ can dwell in our heart and we can become all that he has intended us to be this has to be something that we desire more than anything that we've ever desired on the face of this earth though when it is a true desire when it comes from the depths of our heart and we cry out Lord save me I'm thine and help me so that I may live a life that is pleasing to you God comes to us and he begins to help us and to transform our hearts so this story is, is a story that has great meaning but also great power and great hope attached to it so may we take her story the life of Saint Mary of Egypt and see how God can work in our own lives then we have to ask God to help us and to guide us so that we can imitate her repentance in her life and to truly change so that we become all that he has created us to be. Through the prayers of St. Mary of Egypt, may Christ our God have mercy upon us and save us. Amen. Please come forward. <clears throat> 